My name is Joe Peroni, and this is the Rise Above Project. And today we're going to talk about the possible benefits of pornography for men and women. And I do know that this is a touchy subject for some people, no pun intended. So I'm going to try to treat it with as much care as humanly possible here. So the benefits that I can see can be from psychological benefits, emotional and physical benefits. And of course, all this will add to improving your relationship. Now, each benefit will, of course, enhance all the others. For example, if somebody has inhibition problems and they get introduced to porn with their partner, it's possible that this could be a gateway to open them up or to have a little bit more openness to experience. And of course, this will allow them to experience more physical pleasure as well. So if we start from the emotional side, that improves then the physical side will improve, then the overall health will improve, and then of course that will lead to the relationship improving. Now on the inverse, if there's any issues in one area that's negative, it will affect all the other areas, unfortunately. So this is why we have to look out for this as well. For example, if somebody is insecure, uh, maybe envious, maybe jealous, and then we add pornography to the mix, that's probably gonna equal a relationship problem, or it will appear to be one. But the actual real problem is the insecurity and lack of self-love that needs to be taken care of before porn is put into the mix. Another example might be this, the inability to make boundaries and the inability to be assertive in your relationship. Now, if we add porn to that, it's possible that somebody feels a little used or maybe even abused. And of course, that's not gonna work well in a relationship. But here again, it's not a porn problem. It's actually a relationship problem because the real problem is the deficiency in knowing exactly what you want and having the ability to assert yourself in the relationship. So, as far as benefits are concerned, let's start off with women first, because there is plenty of empirical data, if you can believe this, to back up that pornography helps women. Now, a lot of the empirical data goes against men, and we're gonna discuss that later. But the positives to women are because in our society, we live in a very repressed, puritanical society, and women get a lot of negative messages from, from even before puberty, about how sex is dirty, sex is bad, their own bodies are dirty or bad in some way. And because of this repression, because of this inhibition, because of many women, not all, many, having insecurities with their own bodies, they don't even know what their bodies look like sometimes. Uh, they don't know how their bodies work sexually sometimes. And all of this is not gonna bode well for a good sexual relationship with a partner that they love. And if they start to get a little bit more open to experience and used to seeing bodies, and pornography can do this, preferably probably with a partner in a more loving situation, but they could see that the naked body is not an ugly, bad thing, obviously. Uh, sex between people, consenting adults, is not a bad thing. Sexual desire not a bad thing. Sexual needs, not a bad thing. And it turns out that a lot of people have different needs than other people. And it's okay to admit that and it's okay to have these needs, desires. And it's even okay to have fantasies to do things or to experience things that in your mind that you would never actually wanna do in real life. All of these things are okay. And if we can become more sexually positive, which the area of pornography will help do that, or at least give you an open avenue or a road to do that, every which way we can move a woman further, or sometimes it's a man, to move further into being less inhibited and less repressed, can only add to their sexual pleasure, which will add to their life, which will add to their partner's sexual pleasure as well. So that's the first part for women. Now for men. The major building block for men to be good in bed or to be satisfactory at all, to be able to please another human being, is all about the sexual response cycle and being okay with it. Now going back over it again, 
the sexual response cycle would be excitement, the plateau, orgasm, resolution. This is very important, it has to be known by men. A man who wants to be good in bed has to be okay with sitting in the excitement and plateau phases and leaving out the orgasm part. Now, the sexual response cycle is slightly sexist. Let me tell you why. Because it ends with orgasm and resolution, meaning that there can be no sex involved here after a man has orgasm. But is this true for a woman? Does a woman have resolution after an orgasm? Does she have a refractory period? Well, you could say that she needs a little bit of space and time before she can have another orgasm, but women are multi-orgasmic. And even if she did need an extended period of time to have another orgasm, it doesn't really matter that much because she can still enjoy sexual intercourse. Whereas with a man, they have to understand that the fact is, as soon as they have an orgasm, the intercourse ends. So that's why, in order for a man to be good in bed, he has to understand this extreme concept. Without knowing this, he has no chance, really, of being good in bed. Now, let's be, let's be as nice as we can, right? Let's say the average man lasts five minutes in bed. It's not, it's usually a little, it could be a lot less. But let, let's be nice about this. Let's be charitable. Let's give him five minutes of actual intercourse time. Now, the negative here, of course, is that the average woman, if she can have an orgasm during intercourse, they say about 75% of women cannot. But of the ones who can, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes of actual intercourse time in order to have an orgasm. So what does this mean? It means that if you're a man and you're listening to me right now, if you're a woman and you're listening to me, the man you're with needs to last three to four times longer than the average man to satisfy you. Straight biology. So this is something that needs to be handled. Can it be handled through porn? I believe it can. Um, I wanted to tell you a story about what my father told me when I was about 13 years old, when we did have conversations about sex. And um, I decided not to do that. Uh, I wanted to leave that with me and my father. I thought that was maybe a little bit personal, and I don't want anybody to think I'm just talking about me. So what I decided to do is I want to talk about a Greek mythology story instead that I believe every man should have this conversation with his son. And if you're a little more open and you want to challenge yourself and you're a woman, maybe you can have this conversation with your son too if there's no man around. Because if you look at this story as I'm going to say it to you, I'll give you a real short version. See where the sexuality part to this story comes out. Because I'll tell, you, tell it to you at the end. But if you don't see the sexuality story in it, that's part of the problem, right? You need, we need to be educated in that area. So let me start. This Greek mythology story, it's about Daedalus, who's the father, and Icarus, who's the son. Now, Daedalus was a man of wisdom, a man of strength. He was respected. He was an architect, he was a designer, he was a craftsman. And unfortunately, he got banned to the island of Crete with his son as a punishment. And they sat there day after day because they couldn't get off the island. This is a long time ago, right? It's not like they could just get a boat and go. They had nothing. But the father was very smart, a lot of wisdom, and he would watch the birds fly every day. And he thought, hmm, I'm going to figure out a way to fly. I'm going to invent some wings, and we're both going to get out of here. And so what he did was he would go around the beach, and he would pick up the loose feathers as they would fall from the birds. And he eventually put together two great sets of wings. And he was trying to explain to his son how the wings work and how to fly in order to get by and to how they're going to leave and to, they're going to be able to live very well in another part of the world. So here's the story of what he told his son, Icarus. He said, don't be afraid, don't be timid. You have to be strong enough to fly. You have to have confidence. So in other words, you can't fly too low. If you fly too low, the sea foam will get on the wings. It will weigh you down. 
you will fall, you will die. No flying, no life. On the other hand, don't get too excited. Don't go crazy, act like you've been there before. Because if you fly too high and you get too excited and you forget the fact that you're trying to fly, you're gonna to fly too close to the sun. And then the wings and the, the glue that puts the wings together will melt. And if this happens, you're going to die. End of story. So what's the moral of this story in terms of sex? You should know it. If you don't know it, it means you don't know that much about sex, right? Because the moral of the story is, is for a man is that you cannot get carried away and you cannot give in to your excitement or else the experience ends. The whole part of being a man in terms of sexuality is to sit right in the middle and to be excited for as long as it takes for your partner or for whatever you think is a good long time. And as I suggested, you need to, as a minimum, you need to last about three to four times longer than the average man. That's a minimum goal, minimum. So think about that. So how does porn help? That's the big question today, right? How, how does a man benefit from porn? I'll tell you. Because it's an ugly word that people don't like, but it's the desensitization. Now, the average man, when he sees a girl, especially when he's young, a naked girl, he's already done. Like, it doesn't take long. Like, <laughs> a bunch of years ago when I was, oh God, uh, maybe my first year of college, I went to go s to this comedy place. And I saw this guy that nobody ever knew. I think I got in for like $10 because nobody knew who he was. He ended up being really famous. It was Jay Leno. And I laughed so hard because he was talking. He goes, listen, if you're with your girlfriend today, I, I don't want to spill the beans on you. He goes, but I'll tell you some of my experiences. He goes, I suffered from premature ejaculation for forever. He goes, I would set up a date. I would pull up my car and drive up to her house. I'd open up my car door and it, it would be over. And I have to call her and go, listen, <laughs> Uh, sorry, it's got to be next week. <laughs> you know? And then he said the next week he would pull up, he would walk up the driveway, go to the house, he would knock on the door, she would answer the door and say hello in this really nice dress and he'd be like, oh my God, I came again. <laughs> so I got to go back home. Let me, let me just see if I could start this next week. And he thought, wow, you know, being able to control yourself as a man is like this really difficult thing. So anyway, I always laughed at that because every man has that story uh, and some of us have what, that story way too much. So porn can help you to the desensitization of the female body and you need that. Now you also need to be desensitized to sound because the first second a girl oohs or ahs or moans, usually story over. So it, it takes a real competent guy to be able to continue to have sex and hear a girl moan and moan and moan and not be finished themselves because you gotta wait until she's done. It's, it takes a lot of experience and a lot of control to do that, a lot of self-discipline. So how do you do that? You can't just go around using women, okay? <laughs> so it does help with pornography to do this, to be able to get used to desensitizing yourself to the sights and sound of a woman. Now, it also gets you desensitized to your own excitement. Because at a very young age, guys figure as soon as they get sexually excited, they need to have an orgasm, right? And then they start masturbating and they masturbate in such a way that it's like as soon as they get excited, they want to get it over with. And the way guys watch porn now is that they watch a segment for two or three minutes and they try to get off within two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. So my suggestion would be, and I've said this to a lot of guys, and they all go, oh my God, you're such a jerk but then they'll come back to me a year later and they go, oh my God, you saved my life. What happens is if you choose to use porn, and I'm kind of saying you very well could, it's a, a good gateway here, use it for sexual excitement, but do not finish. Sit in that excitement phase for about an hour. At that time, if you choose to finish, then good for you. But don't get used to just going and get it, get it, ugh. I get excited, boom, and then it's done. Can't happen like that. You can't have this instant gratification because if, if you continue to do that, you get better 
at being quick. So what you want to do is watch it for excitement. Just sit in there. Be very lackadaisical. It should be like it's a nothing thing. I remember this conversation with a porn star. And he was saying that you should be able to be sexually excited by watching porn on one side or even masturbating. And the other person should never know it. You should be able to call up your cable company and go, oh yeah, um, can I get Showtime this month? There's some shows I really want to see. Um, how about ESPN? Or you should be able to call up and order dinner and say, yeah, I want a steak, I want it well done. You should be able to talk very normal. It should be very nonchalant. This should not be this thing of excitement. You know, I just was watching a show before and I had this guy, he takes off his shirt. And he looked like he maybe trained for like a week. He didn't even look that great. But yet the girls were going crazy. And they were going, oh my God, this is the greatest day ever. I got to see this guy and he has a little bit of a hint of abdominal muscles. Listen, when you're a man, you can't act like that. You've got to be disciplined. You've got to be controlled. You have to be like you've been there before. Even if you haven't, you have to train yourself into that. If you don't like the word desensitize, I'm trying to think of a different word for desensitize because that has like a loaded content. Like, oh my God, you're going to be desensitized to women. It's not that. Let's change the word now. Let's use the word you need to familiarize yourself with it. I'll give you an example of that. Let's say you need an emergency surgery and there's a surgeon who shows up and he's not desensitized or familiarized. And this surgeon shows up and he's kicking in, kicking into the limbic system. In other words, his heart rate is going through the roof. He's breathing hard. This person, man or woman, their hands are shaking. Is this the person you want to do a surgery on you? Or do you want someone who has been familiarized and desensitized? Right? As a therapist, you get about 3,000 hours before you can become licensed. The first hour that I ever did... I was scared to death. I was trying not to. I think I was sitting on my hands because I didn't want to show the client that my hands were shaking. Is that the person you want as your therapist? <laughs> no. And in, in the beginning like that, I didn't get paid. That's because I wasn't worth anything. But after 3,000 hours, somebody could sit there and say the most horrible, terrible thing that happened to them. And it's not that I don't care. It's just that I'm so desensitized that I can focus in and care more. I hope I'm explaining this correctly to you. For example, if you're a man and you're having sex and you're trying to be as pleasing as you can to your partner and you've become desensitized and familiarized, what you can do is focus on her more and take it off of yourself, which that will also make you more valuable in bed and will make you be able to last longer. This is important. Now there's another subject here I was struggling if I should talk about, because it's not a subject I like, but guys always complain about this and it's so embarrassing to me because to me they're a bunch of wimps. It's called epididymal, epididymal hypertension. And it means that, let me just start off by this. This is usually used by men, and I hate this, it's used by men to manipulate, to coerce, to cajole women, to guilt them, to shame them into having sex. They like to use the term, again, I want to be professional, but no one's going to understand me if I say epididymal hypertension. So I got to use the colloquial term, I guess you'd call it. And they use the term blue balls is that if a man gets excited, he has to finish. And if he's with a woman, guess what? She gets the job, she has to finish. That's garbage. That's part of rape culture. You need to understand that. Women's sexual organs also get flushed with blood and women also have needs and desires. You don't see women guilting men into having sex with them saying you have to finish because I'm excited. No, it's a horrible way to be, and men need to be told that over and over again. They go, oh, but it hurts. Get over it. First of all, you don't know what hurt is if you think that's what hurt. 
if you think that's what pain is. Number two, go to the gym, okay? If you do a bunch of curls, let's say, for your biceps, your, your arms are gonna get bigger. They get pumped up. They get filled with blood. They get very vascular. It's the same thing. It's epididymal hypertension of your arms, okay? There's no difference. It's getting a pump. That in itself is pleasurable. What happens with that? You get in your car and you drive home which is what you should do if you're on a date and you get sexually excited, but she doesn't want to sleep with you. Be smart. Be like Daedalus and Icarus, right? Don't be the kid. Be like Daedalus, who is controlled and intelligent and smart and has self-discipline. That's the lesson. Uh, let's move on. Can pornography, because I don't want this show to be too long, I always end up making it too long because I guess I like to talk and I don't know that. Okay, so let's talk about education. Now, I know somebody right off is going to say, it's sex. You don't need to be educated about sex. Sex is instinctual. Hmm, is it? It's a good question. So let me tell you what is instinctual about sex. It's desire. The desire for sex is instinctual. However, pretty much nothing else is. Sexual information, sexual knowledge, sexual techniques, sexual skills, taboos, stigma, guilt, shame. All of that is learned. So most of it is learned. Here's a couple of questions for you. Do you know what the Kama Sutra is? You've heard of it? How many positions are in it? That's right, I guarantee you, you don't know. Do you know what the G-spot is? Do you know how to stimulate it? Do you know what the prostate is? In sexual terms, do you know how to stimulate that? Good question, most people don't, right? Do you know what Kegels are? Do you know what pubocosageal muscles are? All this is really important. Do you know what the lotus position is and why it might be important for certain couples? I didn't think so, right? So. I think I can prove to you for like the next 10 hours straight is that most people, well, let me take that back. All people need to be educated about sex. If you want to be able to be, if you want to have a good sex life, if you want to be able to pleasure yourself and to be able to pleasure others, it's the way it is. There's a lot of instruction that's involved and don't feel bad about it. I just finished watching a documentary that I thought was so interesting about penguins that penguins, as great as they are swimming, they don't live in the water. They live on land. They're born on land. They actually have to be taught to swim. You think it would be instinctual. It's not. They're afraid of water. So if you think that you know everything about sex just because you're afraid to talk about it and you, wanna, you don't want to tell people, you know, it, 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 listen, get over it. There's a lot to learn. Can you learn it through porn? That's why we're here, right? Some of the benefits. Listen, you don't have to watch the most horrible porn in the world. You know, and some porn is downright destructive and horrible. I get it. It's the same thing about food though, right? We can eat great food, fruits, vegetables, grains, lean meats, that's great. But you can eat processed food and that could kill you, right? So would we throw out all food because some foods are bad? No, there's some porn that's horrible. But you can also learn a lot. If you wanna learn about prostate, G-spot, certain positions. Hey, do you even know why a man should be switching positions during sex? I'm not gonna tell you today because that's not the show. But it, it's not to show off and it's not to do some crazy position that somebody saw in a video. There's some very practical reasons of why you would be switching positions in sex. These are things you have to know. So, in short, can you use pornography for education? Absolutely yes. Is education important when it comes to pleasing partners? Absolutely yes. So let's finish up with this. Are there emotional benefits to pornography? I believe that there can be. Why? Because it opens up a pathway, right? It allows for a conversation about needs and desires. It's a lot easier to bring up a conversation when you maybe see it on a screen and you're trying to be 
empathetic and compassionate with your partner, understanding that their needs may not be your needs or their needs shouldn't offend you. You know, these things could be opened up more when you watch it rather than trying to bring up a conversation. It's hard to bring up a conversation, right? Like you're a man, you're sitting there and the woman says, I don't know, I was thinking it's kind of exciting to have more than one man at the same time. And you're like, oh my God, how is that possible? How is that possible? Well, it's like one handbag is good, two is better, right? Like, I mean, it's basic. You just have to get over it and be more open to experience. I think porn also allows for honest conversations and that can move a couple towards being authentic, which of course leads them to being more intimate. And how does this happen? By being more open and vulnerable. Listen, and I think when you're with a partner and there's sex involved, I think it's all about being open and vulnerable, isn't it? And sometimes we need something else to spice it up. Can porn do that? Absolutely. Do you need porn to do that? Probably not. But it, it's, a, it's a way to do that. Let me finish with this. I think most people out there are very good people and we try to be politically correct. And of course we want to be that way. We want to be professional. We don't want to offend people. We want to come across as being a certain way. There's a certain way that we talk to people. There's a certain way with how we deal with people. There's a certain way like how we dress around certain people. It's all understandable. That's what we do socially. But let me offer this to you. You can take it or leave it. I believe a good sexual relationship has to do everything with being as not politically correct as possible to get as deep, as nasty, as dirty, as fantasy type as you want with that person. You should be able to say things, do things, bring up things as you want. Is porn a good gateway? to opening up those types of conversations and maybe those kinds of actions to bring a little more or a lot more intimacy? Absolutely, yes, of course. And think about this, even in your own fantasies, right? Your own fantasies can only take you as far as your brain knows. Nothing wrong with that. But other people have fantasies too. And they make movies about that. So if you can see other fantasies. It might show you things that you really like that you never even thought you knew that you would like. What's wrong with that? What could be wrong with that? Especially with consensual, consensual adults. So the show got longer than I thought it should, of course, as usual, but that's okay. So hopefully you find some of that beneficial to you. Again, if it's beneficial to you, grab it, hold on to it, make it yours. If you don't find it beneficial, if you find it offensive in any way, then ditch it, get rid of it, and don't even bother that I said it. it's not a problem. Nobody's forcing you to do anything. Just giving you some wisdom and some good ideas. My name is Joe Peroni. This is the Rise Above Project, and I would hope that you would subscribe. You can hit the like button if you like, and if you want, you can comment. People seem to be afraid of my shows. They don't comment very much. So, uh, but, but I, I, you know, agree with me, disagree with me. Leave a comment. I love comments. Thank you. See you next week.